Hi, this is Walt. Yeah, I heard you were trying to get into astrophotography. That's awesome. What style are you going for? All. All. We need some direction. There's a lot of different kinds of astrophotography, but we're really just going to talk about three. Landscape, deep sky, and lunar and planetary. We'll try to figure out which one might be best for you. And then tonight, we're just going to try all three in the field in the backyard. Nothing special, just seeing what they look like. So stick around to the end. Now let's get on with it. Landscape is when you take a photograph of both the stars and the ground. And it's what I usually recommend first because it's so easy. All you need is a camera with a wide angle lens and a tripod and a dark sky. So looking at a light pollution map, let's say you live in an area like this, this style may not be for you. So who is landscape for? It's for people on a budget, because all you need is a camera, lens, and tripod. You can get all those together in one kit. So check that out. It's also for people who already own a camera and just want to try something different. So if you have a DSLR, if you have that 18 to 35 millimeter kit lens, that's perfect. Go out and shoot with that. You don't need to worry about getting uh, very expensive lenses right now, as long as it's kind of wide. It's also for people who love outdoors. You're going to be spending a lot of time outside at night in the middle of nowhere. So I hope you're okay with coyotes. That's enough! And finally, it's for loners. You're going to be spending so much time out in the middle of nowhere and your friends aren't going to sit out there in the dark watching you take pictures of things they can't see. You're better off bringing your dog. At some point, you might look into getting a star tracker. A device like this that rotates your camera with the earth and you can take much longer exposures. And that's when you'll really realize the power of all your other lenses like your nifty 50 or your 75 to 300 millimeter or if you have one of these bird catching bazooka lenses. And that's when you start getting in the world of deep sky astrophotography. Deep space. I knew they would show up. Deep sky. That's what I'm learning this year. I'm currently focusing on the beginner targets like the Orion Nebula, Pleiades, and Andromeda. This is really, in my opinion, the next logical step up from landscape with a uh, camera, tripod, and star tracker. Uh, basically all I did was add a bigger lens and this guide scope and guide camera, and this all connects to a laptop that controls everything. It's been a lot of fun, but it's also been very difficult, but I don't want to discourage you, so let's talk about who Deep Sky is for. Deep Sky is for people with a lot of patience. It's going to take some time to learn how to use all this. The learning curve is a, is a bit steeper, especially if you decide to go for the route of a big go-to tracking mount, a dedicated astronomy camera, and a telescope, which I would absolutely love to do, but I think I need to learn how to use something a little more simple like this first. Deep Sky is also for people who are very passionate about this hobby because the results are so rewarding. Eventually, you're gonna become a huge astrophotography addict, and you're gonna be selling all your equipment to buy new telescopes. Hey, Jacqueline. You know that red telecaster mine you've always wanted? Well, I really need a telescope. And one thing you might not think of, but deep sky could be for people who live in light polluted areas. Because you can build um, a deep sky rig using light pollution filters and specialized cameras and things like that to shoot right through that light pollution. Just if you don't believe me, just check out Astro Backyard, an incredible YouTube channel. Trevor does most of his work from a light polluted backyard. Okay, so check this out. I mentioned earlier that I use a guide scope and guide camera to guide the star tracker. Well, when I ordered the guide camera, I looked on the box and it, they called it a planetary camera. Mind blown. I never thought about it, but this is the perfect kind of camera to put in a telescope, which brings me to the third style, lunar and planetary. So who is this style for? It's definitely for people who already own telescopes, which could be a lot of you. All you have to do is slip it in. I'll show you in a, in a minute. Uh, it's for people on a budget. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, that's where my advice stops because I have never taken a picture through a telescope in my life. And so uh, let me at least show you how easy I think it's going to be.
I've had this telescope for years. It was given to me by a very good friend years ago. Let's see, so we're gonna take out the eyepiece, put it down in this little eyepiece tray here. Take this planetary camera. Looks a lot like this. Slide it right into the focuser. Tighten it down. Plug it into the laptop. Fire up our capturing software. Focus. And hopefully we're good to go, at least to take a, a few snapshots or a short video. I cannot wait to try this for the first time. I'm going outside right now to get set up. Wish me luck. All right, everybody. This is really exciting. I've got my ZWO camera in the telescope. I found the moon, I got it all focused up, and it kind of blew my mind. So right now, I just want to share this moment with you. This is my very first time shooting anything through a telescope. Here we go. Well, that was really exciting. I might try Mars later, I'm not sure yet. For now, I'm waiting on this moon right behind me to set. I'm gonna take my DSLR camera on a tripod, no Star Trek or anything, and just face it out into this field and take a bunch of 15 second exposures and see what happens. I haven't done anything like this in a while. After that, Pleiades will be right above me and I'll photograph that with the deep sky rig for the rest of the night. Wow, last night was so fun. I've never tried so many styles of astrophotography in one night. The highlight was definitely seeing the moon on my laptop screen with the ZWO camera put in the telescope. Guys, that was a five minute setup and the results were beautiful. I, I'm gonna experiment with that all week and hopefully I'll get better at some point and can make some videos about that. All right, so before I show you the rest of the photos, I just wanna say for landscape astrophotography, it really is best that you get out away from your house, find a dark place with a cool subject as your foreground. My backyard is really not the best for that. It's just an empty field with an orange street light. But for the purpose of this video, I just wanted to show you what it looks like with just a DSLR camera, lens and tripod and nothing else. And it worked quite well for that. But for deep sky astrophotography, my backyard is great because there's very little light pollution. It's a portal three slash four if you don't know what that means, it just means there's not a lot of light pollution out here. And uh, no trees. And so if you live in an area with low light pollution and not a lot of trees or obstructions, deep sky might be for you. So you should definitely think about that. All right, well, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please like and subscribe. And I'll be doing lots more of this in the future. And as always, stay spacey and clear skies.